Hello guys, you are searching for best C language tutorial with complete live example and little bit interesting logical questions. So then this video is for you, where I will explain you the C language from the very scratch to complete logical building concepts. In this tutorial, I will tell you how to create the basic application logics, how to think about the different different logics and how to write without helping of any book or something. So in this tutorial series, I will explain you from the very scratch, like introduction of C language, then we will see about what are the different different data types we are having in the C language, then we will go with the if else concept, loops, and all this concept we will discuss in a very detailed way. So let us start with this series. So first, I will tell you how to download and install the C language software. So let us see this concept. Now we'll see how to download the Dev C++ software. So first open the Google, search for Dev C++ download, click on the first link. It will get diverted on this page. Click on download. You will get one message here. Your download will start shortly. Just wait for a few seconds. Your download will get started. Now see here, your download will get started here. Now, once it is downloaded, double click on this one, you will get one pop-up, just click on yes. No, now you are able to see here, you will get this pop-up, click on OK, click on I agree, click on next, click on install. So here, installation will take few seconds of time, just let us install all the files here. Now you can see installation got completed, click on finish. So like this, you can install the C language software. Once it is installed, just click, click on next, click on next, OK. And your software will be ready. Now after downloading the C language software, first we will see how to write the first C language program. So whenever we write any C language program, the two things we required, that is header files. What are the headers files do we require? We require hash include stdio.h and second we require hash include colio.h. This is called header file. Sir, what is header file? So a header file is nothing but it will have some predefined code or we can say predefined function to execute our C language program. So whatever the things we require to execute the C language program, that things will be available in this two header file. STDIO stands for standard input output header file and CONIO starts for console input output header file. Then we should write white main. Here, this is called function. The question which asks or the question which is asked in the interview is, can we write C language program with any function name, answer, understand carefully. Can we write C program without main? Means instead of main, can I write any other function name? Answer is yes, you can write. But you cannot execute. That is very important. If you want to see the output, then compulsory main function is required. I will show you when we'll go with the practical. So this, con this is called what? Function. This you remember. So wherever you get this bracket, that will become function. And this white is called return type. White is called what? Return type. Next. So this is basic structure of C language. Now, if you want to print anything in the C language, then you should use the function called printf. All should be small. So whatever you want to print on the screen, you should write inside the double quotation. What I wanted to print, suppose we wanted to print PR softwares. You can print whatever you want to print. So I'm writing this matter. So whatever I wrote in the double quotation, exactly same will come on the screen. So if I write here PR softwares, so I will get it on the screen is what? PR softwares. So quickly revise all those things. The first section, we called it header file section. Wide main is called the function. 
if you want to print anything we will write in the double quotation of printf whatever we wrote that will come on the output screen the same things we will see in the practical way so let us see and execute this program then we will go with the further things so first you should open the dev c++ which we have downloaded then take a new file go to the file go to the source source file you have to go it here now here few things you have to do it let us say right now in my system my font style is set but when you open the first time this font size might be very small so how to increase the font style so go to the tools go to the editor options go to the fonts you can just increase or decrease the fonts from here guys and click on okay second some people want to change the color theme of this one right now this color theme as you are able to see it is a completely white but as you have seen in many systems it can be black or different different types you can click on here so when you click on here it will get change one by one so you can see here color you are getting change but i like the basic one which is white so i am selecting only white so this two things which every student asks so that's why i explain it okay let us write the c language program so as i told whenever we have to execute any c language program we should take which two header file first is hash include stdio.h and second is hash include conio.h what is the meaning already we have seen on the board then which is the important thing you required you required the white main to print anything on the screen what do we need we need printf in printf whatever you wrote it will print on the screen so let us say i am writing here pr softwares training institute you can write whatever you want to guys whatever you wrote that will get printed so whenever we write the program the first step is very important is save the program and compile the program so go to the file click on execute here it is asking you compile so first you save and compile or if you directly click on compile it will ask you to save the program so it is your wish however you want let us say i am giving here pr1.c nothing but program1.c is my file name when we give the file name you can give any name guys but dot c is mandatory like instead of pr1 i can write my name your name whatever you want but what is mandatory here dot c and click on save so when we save the program it will get compiled what is the meaning of compile our code it will convert into machine language so that's why it is showing the result of compilation so result of compilation is what it is showing there is no error there is no warning example if you give any uh, sorry if you do any mistake if you do, do not write semicolon means you have done any mistake now you compile the program whenever we do any changes make sure you should compile again so immediately it is giving error what is the error expected semicolon before bracket so before bracket what you are expecting semicolon so like this should should write that thing now i did changes so again what i have to do i have to compile compile means basically our code it is converting to machine language now my program is compiled now you have to see the output so you have to click on run so i will get pr software training institute this is suppose i enter the only one message what if i want the multiple messages so you can write in the continuation suppose pr software training institute in hyderabad telangana i will write here number 1 institute for programming guys message you can write anything whatever your wish you can write so basically how many messages we have written guys three let us compile first always do now see i do not compile i'm directly running click on run how many output we are getting only one why because compilation is mandatory guys without compilation your code will not get converted so again compile no error no warning now you execute now when i run how many lines of output you are expecting guys three lines but look at to the output i'm getting in one line sir why always remember whether you write one line or three lines by default your data will get printed in one line only if you want to go on the new line then you have to add here slash n what is slash n meaning 
after this line go on the new line so i wrote slasher only one time so let us see here compile and run again shortcut is guys you can use this third option compile and run together output will come now see this one line we got it on the separate but this two line club together why because we do not write slasher so again you can write slash and slash and is basically after this slash and whatever it will, it will come go to the new line again do i need here slash and no why because there is no data after this one so this two slash and will be enough again what compile and run. so like this we can print the multiple lines of data so simple what you have to remember here whenever we have to write any c language program these two header files are mandatory then to start the program we are having main function then whatever you want to print you have to use the printf function whatever you write in the double quotation it will get printed on the screen and last and very important thing slash n what is slash n slash n is for new line so these three things i hope you got the clarity let us continue on the board from here okay so now after the practical of how to print the single statement and how to print the multiple statement we understood about what is the use of slash n in the programming now moving further now i am going to tell you about the format specifier concept so what is exactly the format specifier is format specifier many student get confused with this concept so basically majorly we are discussing three format specifier here that is percentile d percentile f and percentile c so whenever you want to print any number on the screen you will use the percentile d this is for what numbers i will say only whole numbers like no decimal values if you want the decimal values then you should use the percentile f and this is for characters sir generally what is the problem we are getting when we print directly number in the printf that we will understand suppose i am writing the program white main and then inside that we are writing printf and in double quotation i wrote 10 plus 20 now you tell me what is the output you are expecting on the screen my expectation is 30 but what will you get here you will get what 10 plus 20 is what you will get it 10 plus 20 only you will not get 30 why i told you in the very first uh, first part 10 plus 20 is nothing but whatever you write in the double quotation that will get printed as it is it will not get changed but we want what we are expecting output of this one not the as it is concept so in this situation we should introduce the concept called format specifier how can we write so very simple suppose example you wanted to print let me rub this So now, whenever you wanted to print the number, so you write here percentile D. Don't pass the direct values here. So suppose example you want to print ten. If I write here ten, this ten is in replace with percentile D. So in the output you will get it ten. You want to print ten plus twenty. Suppose example now I wrote here what ten plus twenty. First, what it will do because it is not in the double quotation. First, it, this equation gets solved. What is the output? You will get ten plus twenty thirty. and at the end you are getting only one value this is become 30 and this one value will get replaced with percentile d so now on the screen what output you will get it you will get the output am i right i hope you are getting the concept this one okay now this first we will try to do uh, we will take different different numbers and we'll try to see the output in a practical way then we'll come back to the board again okay so let us see the practical now so now guys we will understand this format specifier in a practical way so as i told you on the board whenever we want to print the number that numbers we don't write directly inside what print here so first let me write the program first we'll write two header file that is has include stdi.h and second header file is conio.h then we are writing wide main and then print here and in print up double quotation we will try to print 10 plus 20 so what i told guys here whenever we write anything in the double quotation it will get printed as it is first let me save the program so i will do compile and run now save the program you can give any name let us give here uh, f 
s dot c format specify dot c now we will get what 10 plus 20 as it is we are getting but what is our requirement we are not expecting here 10 plus 20 we are expecting what 30 so whenever we want to perform any operations here so we should not write directly that inside where to write then you write comma outside that expression now this value we wanted to print on the screen so you know that whenever you want to print on the scene uh, screen you should write in double quotation so you write here percentile d so what will happen whenever you wrote expression for this expression gets solved what is the expression 30 and that one value will get replaced with the percentile d so let us run this and check it first we are getting 30 so now we will understand in a detailed way about the format specifier so now I will remove this expression. So whenever you want to print one percentile D, you should write one number for one percentile D. If you want two values, so you should write here two percentile D. Let me write two percentile D. So side, how many values we should pass? Two values. Any values you can pass. Now one thing. Sir, when I write two percentile D and I give space in between manually, if you give space, then only space will come on the screen. You can check. Space is coming. If you don't give the space, space will not come. If I remove the space, space will not come. And guys, I am doing compile and run. Make sure that it's both should be done. So space is not coming. So always remember, whenever you want to print anything and you want in space, then you can write space. If you want comma, you can write comma. You want dash, you can write dash. So whatever you write there, that will get printed now point number three suppose here i gave three percentile d i gave how many percentile d is three so i can pass the three value that you already know but what if i pass only two value so what is the answer guys here you people will say you will get error the answer is no not error so simple thing how many values you wanted to print here you wanted to print three values. But how many values you pass? Two. So first will be four, second will be five. So third value, it will take a garbage value. So garbage value means what? It is nothing but whatever the available value in the system, that value it will take by default. Right now it is taking zero, but not necessary. When you execute, you will get minus something. When, suppose uh, I execute, after a few days, might be I will get 100, 1000. Everybody will get the different, different value because this value we call it garbage value. It is not fixed values. So that's why it is called what type of value? Garbage values. Okay. I hope it is very clear for you. So whenever you pass number of percentile D compulsory, you should get this value. If you are not getting here proper value, you are getting something different value. It means you do not pass that value properly, guys. Is it clear? Okay. Now, so this is about the number when you want to print. But what if I want the decimal value? Let me just print the decimal value. So I will give here 10.5 or 10.6. So will it accept? Answer is no. It will not print my value. Is it printing? See, garbage value is something like this. You can see here garbage value. So my 10.6, for percentile D, there is no number. So it is taking a garbage value from the system. So compulsory, if you want the decimal value, you can't write percentile D. What you have to write, I said, percentile F. Let us see here. And here, I'm just changing the number to 4. Okay, 10.4. Why, I will tell you. I wrote here 10.4. But after the dot, is it taking 10.4 or some zeros are added there? Zeros are added. Why? Because after the dot, by default, it will take six digit. Whether you write one digit, two digit, three digit, no problem. By default, it will shift to how many digit? Six digit. Let us write here three digits. And compile and run the program again. Every time you have to do this step. So, but see, I wrote three digit. By default, it is adding three more digit. So, after the dot, somebody asks you in float, how many digits it will take? So, answer is six digit. But you will say, sir, no, I want to round up to only two digits. Even I give three, I want two, not six. 
So be, after the percent you write dot two. Now you compile and run the program and check it. So now it is round up to two digit. So like this you can write the format specified concept. Suppose you want the two float values. So again the same thing what you have done in percentile D you have to write two percentile F. Don't write one you have to write what two. And here also you add this slasher. Comma 10.5 10.7 comma 5.6 you can write like this and both will have how many by default after the dot how many decimal it will be there 6 decimal will be there after the dot what if I want to print the alphabet so whenever you want to print the alphabet you can print percentile C for alphanumeric value means in single quotever, quotation whatever you write that will get printed so I wrote here R so R will get printed on the screen. Okay, what is the error guys here? Read the error, expected semicolon before bracket. So before bracket, semicolon expected. Make a habit to read the error also. Compile and run. So we are getting everything fine. Even in one printf, if you want to print all that value, that is also possible because it depends on the requirement. You can write percentile D, percentile F and percentile C. Suppose I want first value is 100, Second value is 10.6. Third value is in single quotation suppose T. And last is semicolon. Every statement should end with a semicolon. That is mandatory guys. Compile and run. So see, you are getting all the values. But this value is coming in one line. Why guys? Tell me. We have not written slash in here. That is very important. So like this, you can use the different different format specifier in your program. I hope it is very clear up to here. Okay. So now we have understood in a practical way what exactly the format specifier and how it works. So let me give you some more examples about the format specifier and then I will introduce what exactly the data types and what is the need of variable. Okay. First, let us understand what is the need of that things and then we'll go with the next concept. So as you know that to start any C language program, we write wide min. Now, you should remember guys, I will not write every time header file and all. You should remember, we need the header file to run the program. Okay. Next, I wanted to print the number. Suppose I am writing here, print F. I wanted to print what? Suppose example, I wanted to print 10 and 20. So, I am writing percentile D, percentile D. What it will get print? 10 and 20 will get print on the screen. Now, I wanted to print sum of the two number. What I want to print? Sum of the two number. Let us say I wanted to print print of sum of the two number. So, I am writing sum means how many value will come? Only one. In practical way, I have shown you already. So, I am writing here 10 plus 20. Here, I am just printing the two values. Here, I am printing 10 plus 20, how much? 30. So, you will get it on the screen what? 30 will get replaced with this one. I want to do multiplication, so I am writing printf percentile d. If I want multiplication, what to write guys here? 10 into 20. So 10 into 20, how much? 200. 200 will get replaced with percentile d. Next, I want to write subtraction. So I am writing printf percentile d, comma 10 minus 20. What is the value? Minus 10 will get printed. So there are so many operations are there. First, let me explain you this concept. Now here, you will get to know why we are going with the variable and data type concept. So always, whenever we learn any topic, so you should understand first why. As I told you, why format specifier. Similarly, why we need variables and data type. So let us understand. Suppose I executed this program. What is the output you will get it, guys? First, you will get it 10 space 20, 10 and 20 you will get it 30, then 10 and 20, 200 and 10 minus 20 is minus 10 and guys it will come in one line because I do not add a slash in. so you can add a slash in. just understand I will get this out, okay. Now you tell me, suppose first time I compile and run, I get the same output, again I compile and run, what is the output I will get it, same, why, because I wrote here constant value. Constant means what? Directly I wrote the value there. If I execute and run this program, 
hundred times also, my output will not get changed. It will be exactly same. Why? Because value is already given. Suppose now second thing. Suppose imagine I want to change the value instead of ten. I want to change the value to hundred. Instead of ten, how much I want? Hundred. So now you tell me if I want to change this value ten, how many places I have to change? One place or all the places? Obviously, we should change all the places. Here hundred, here hundred, here hundred, here hundred. So it is very difficult to change every time because right now the code is only three or four lines, but real time codes will be very big. So you should check each and every place where you wrote that particular value. So real time, it is not recommended to write the constant value. So then, how we should write the value? So this value we should store inside one of the variable. You have to store inside one of the variable. Let us say I am writing here i is equals a is equals to ten, comma I am writing here b is equals to twenty. You don't get confused, guys. What is a and b? You remember variable. What is variable? I am going to tell you very soon. So whenever you want to Print the values. Don't write constant value. What is recommended? That value should be stored inside the variable. You take alphabet A is equals to ten, B is equals to twenty. Wherever the A is there, sorry, wherever the ten is there, replace with A. Wherever twenty is there, replace with B. Do it everywhere the same thing. A, B, A, B, A. So wherever a b is there, that value got change. But sir, writing only these two part is not enough. I should tell what is a is storing and what is b is storing. What it is storing? It is storing number. But system will not understand like this. You should write here the concept called data type. That is integer. So when I write integer, it will get understand. Okay, my a and b are storing what numbers here. So, what is the data type? Data type is telling what type of data your variable is holding. So, basic idea behind the variable is very simple. You no need to change the value every time. If I change the value at one place, automatically it will get reflected at all the places. So, that's why we need the variable. And what is the need of data type? Because this data type will tell you what is the type of this a and b. So, that's why we should understand about the data types and variables. Now, we are going to discuss very detail about what exactly the data type and what is variable. Let us understand these two topics in a very detailed way. Now, let us discuss about what is exactly the data type and what is variable. So, let us start with the first: what is data type? So, what is data type? It is. It will tell you. It will tell you what type of data. It will tell you what type of data your variable will hold. Your variable will hold. So suppose example, I want to store number. I want to store decimal value. I want to store character. Who will tell? Data type will tell. So majorly, data types are integer, float, and character. So guys, data type again it is divided into signed integer, unsigned integer, float, double, long. Then we are going with the character, unsigned character, signed character. So there are different type, but that we will discuss next. First we are discussing only fundamentals, right? So basically, integer is used for numbers. Whenever you want whole numbers, then we will use integer data type. Float will be used for decimal value. Whenever we want the decimal, then we'll go with the float. And this is for alphabets, or we can say alphanumeric value. Alphabets or alphanumeric value. Alpha numeric values. So whenever you want alphanumeric, we'll go with what data type? Character data type. So now, suppose example, just simple concept you remember. In the last program, I told you, suppose I'm writing here a is equals to ten, and b is equals to twenty. So system directly it will not understand a is storing these numbers and all. When you write before that int, this will get understand. Okay, my variable a and b is storing number. 
simple if i write here float then it will understand okay it is going to store decimal i can write 10 i can write 10.5 also both it will accept but it will not understand until you do not write float there that is very important so instead of integer you can write float if you want to store alphabet you have to write what character so that slowly we will understand everything so basically what integer this data type is telling data types is telling you that what we are going to store up in this variable but now your question is sir what is variable so that we are going to discuss so simple one thing you understand whenever i write a and b internally what will happen it will create the two memories guys how many variables are there that many memories it will create so right now how many memories are there two so it will create two memory a and b so the variable definitions are multiples are there first is what what is variable you tell me by saying this what you can say what variable is doing it is holding the value that is the first definition what is variable it holds the value it holds the value that is a simple first definition second definition is what what is the second definition a name given to the memory location a name given to the memory location is known as is known as variable so understand very careful so when we can say variable either thing variable is holding the value so that is one definition second a name given to the memory location is known as what variable so these are the two points you should remember now very important question will come to your mind sir can i write any variable name whatever i want you wrote a and b so is it necessary to write only a and b or i can write whatever i want so the answer is it depends on the roles of the variables so next topic we should understand roles of the variables so let me rub this part so that i can write that variable roles okay now understand the rules of variable sir what i can write in place of a and b let us understand one by one rule number 1 says that variable name guys i am writing shortcut just understand it variable name should start with should start with alphabet or underscore i'm writing symbol underscore so whenever you want to write the name you can write any name it can start with alphabet or underscore means sometimes you have seen you underscore a is equals to 10 so you can write a is equals to 10 or underscore a is equals to 10 both are valid rule number 2 variable name cannot start with cannot start with number cannot start with number but name can be cannot start with number but but variable name can be alpha numeric alpha numeric meaning suppose i am writing here 1 a is equals to 10 it is invalid but what i can write a1 is equals to 10 so this is invalid but this is valid so that is only the point number 2 says point number 3 what it says it should not have it should not have any space in between any space in between means suppose example you want to write any name let us say i am writing my variable name is i am writing here name as number 1 is equals to 10 suppose i am writing integer number 1 is equals to 
So is it valid or invalid? Rule says it should not have any space in between. So no space error will come. But if you want to write, you can join with this underscore. So it will get separated. Name underscore one is equals to 10. So your purpose will get served and rule will not get violated. But some people will ask me, sir, can I write like this? Num one space is equals to 20. Yes, it is valid. Why? Because this space is not going to consider this is your variable name. Before or after, if you give anything, there is no problem in the C language. Many people get doubts about this. In between, space is not allowed. After or before, if you write, no error. You can try or I will show you in practical when I will. Clear with this? Next rule. This is rule number three. Rule number four. No special character. No special character is allowed. No special character is allowed except underscore means whenever you want to write any name, don't use any symbol except underscore like dollar, star, or hash. Nothing should be used in the variable name. Only allowed is underscore. And the last and the final rule is rule number five is rule number five. Keywords. Keywords cannot be used, can't be used as a variable, as a variable, meaning, so there are 32 keywords in C language. There are 32 keywords in C language. You can see this list. So these names are not allowed for the variable name. So as and when time will get progress, you will get all these keywords. So no need to remember about this one. So like basically this is the meaning of data types and variable. I hope you got complete theoretical knowledge about this one. Let us go the same concept in a practical. Guys, so till now we discuss about what exactly the variable is, what is data type. So that I explain in detail way. Now let us see the practical on that particular topic. So first let us write to header file that is hash include stdr.h and hash include polio.h. These two header files you have to write and then we write white min. So now my first requirement as I explain you on the board. Suppose I am writing 10 plus 20 here. I am writing what? 10 plus 20. And I am writing semicolon. So this is about plus. If I want to do minus, multiplication, division, I can write it down all this stuff. So let us see 1, 2, 3, 4. So first is for plus, second is for multiplication, third is for division, fourth is for subtract. If I compile and run this program, already you are aware, you have to go to the execute, first you have to say compile and run. So first it will ask you to save file name I am giving here p3.c. So there is no error, there is no warning. And I got my values. Am I right? Here there is no problem. So now my concept here is what? Sir, instead of 10, what if I want to change the 100? So what is the solution I told you? You have to go to each place and you have to change. But you don't want to change at each place. Then what is the thing you have to use here? You have to use the concept called data type. Because I want number, so I have to write here integer. If I want decimal, I have to write float. If I want alphabet, I have to write character. So right now what you are taking guys here, you are going to take the numbers. So that is the reason we are using here integer. Then you have to write the variable name. So let us write here a is equals to 10, b is equals to 20. What you can do, instead of 10, you can write here a and instead of b, I can write 20. So let us change this value everywhere. When I change this value and if I run this value, I am getting the same output. There is no problem. But the advantage is what? Imagine instead of 10, I want 100. Just change it at one place. Again, go here and run. So I got my values. So what you are able to understand, the advantage of the variable is what? If I change at one place, it will reflect at all the places. So variable and variable rules already we discussed. Let us 
apply all the rules and try it. Sir, instead of A, can I write underscore A? Answer is yes, you can write. Let me remove all this part. Just we'll try to print the values now. I'm writing here underscore A, comma B. So is it a valid or not? Let us check, compile and run. Will I get my output? Answer is yes, you are getting. It means underscore is a valid variable name. Sir, can I write only underscore? Let us check that one. Execute, compile and run. So yes, you are able to write underscore also. Sir, can I write instead of underscore, I want to write here one num. Is it valid or invalid guys? Invalid. Why? Because it is starting with number. Let us run this one. Compile and run. So error. What is the error? Invalid suffix num on integer constant means it is not possible to write one. But can I write num one guys? Answer is yes, you can write. Let us print num one. Execute, compile and run. Yes, you are getting the output. Now the last rule, I told you cannot give space. Let us give the space and write. So it means whatever the rule which I explain on the board, all the rules are valid or not, I shown you in a practical way. Is it clear guys? Any doubts here? No. Let us move to the further. Suppose imagine I took two values here, A and B. I took A and B. So if I execute this program 100 times, will my output will change? Answer is no. The output will not change. So, previously if you remember, directly when I give value and I give value in the program, both the things are called constant value. Constant means every time same output. But my requirement, I want to ask the user, how many values do you want? And that many values you have to read and print on the screen. So if you want to read and print the values, you should use the concept called printf and scanf. Let us understand how it will be. Suppose you want to read the two values. So first I will write here A comma B I will write. And I want to read this value from the keyboard. So how can I read? So first you should print one message on the screen. Enter the two numbers. Now here what you have to remember guys. When I execute the program, I will get that black window. I hope you are remember that. So when black window is coming, you should print one message. Suppose I am writing here, enter the numbers. So when I give the message, then only somebody will enter. So by seeing this message, enter the two number, what will you do? You will enter the two numbers. To read that, I will use here scanf. What is the use of scanf? Whatever the number you enter, that will read. So number means you have to write here percentile D. How many numbers? Two. So you have to write two percentile. If three number, three percentile. If four number, four percentile. If five number, five percentile D you have to write. Then first number will be stored in address of A and second number will be stored in address of B. Now here you remember we have to give address of A and address of B only. Now what is the important to give address of A and address of B? That I will tell you when I will go with the concept called pointers. But today you remember whenever we want to read the values you have to give address before the number. So internally what will happen, it will create two memory space, A and B and in that that value got stored. And after storing the value, you wanted to print. So how can I print? I will write percentile D space percentile D comma A comma B. So whatever the value I will enter, that will get printed on the screen. Let me execute and run. Suppose I enter 10 and 20. Enter, you have to do it. So 10 and 20, I'm getting. Now here we will do some discussion, guys. Let us observe. I'm going to open the MS Paint to explain in a very detailed way. Let us understand here. Actually, my program will starts from wide and main, guys. Then integer A, B. So when this line number 5 will come, internally what will happen? Two memory will be created. First memory name is A. This first memory name is alphabet A. One second, guys. So I'm going to use here A and B. These two things I'm going to use. So always remember, 
line number 5 we create this memory spaces can somebody tell me what is the value it will take i told you at the start if you remember this is nothing but garbage value something will be there but we don't know that is called garbage value now i am giving message enter the two numbers so this is my output screen where i will get the message enter the two numbers so whatever you write that things will come as it is guys i am writing dash dash imagine that enter the two number by saying this what will you do you will enter two number let us say i am entering 10 20 after ending immediately it will check did you write the scanf answer is yes how many percentile d 2 okay means it is ready to read the two numbers so 10 and 20 it will read where it will store address of a so 10 will come here and address of b 20 will come basically this address is nothing but internally this location will have number so this address is nothing but this number it will get store this 10 and 20 value now after that line number 7 what is there line number 8 what you have done print up now here it is very important in print up first percentile d value is 10 after that what is there space and then 20 that's why you are getting the output on the screen is what 10 space 20 so like this you can read and you can print the number i hope it is very clear everybody okay. now the next concept is just quickly erase this one and try to read the three number so everybody revise along with me three numbers means how many variables will be required three variables then what is the message guys enter the three numbers so let me write enter the three numbers next is what scan f then write the scan f how many percentile d guys 3 1 2 3 where to store address of a address of b address of c very good after that to print the value print f how many percentile d 3 space is required or not required required why because if you don't give the space it will be attach value let us try 3 percentile d then comma a comma b comma e if you give space here that will not count guys let us see see here there is no space but i try to give here will it come no nothing will happen just see the output go to execute compile run it is asking me value i am giving 4 5 6 now it is looking 456 but actually it is a 456 no so what is the mistake we did we do not give here space space is mandatory guys okay this space will not count compile and run let us give now 4 5 6 clear with this so like this we can read the numbers and we can print on the screen now here very important one concept i am going to explain now whatever the number i wrote but this number i wanted to print in print in a different different types what is the meaning of different types let me explain you first that suppose imagine i have the number i printed directly 10 20 but one person is saying sir why you are printing this one please print a is equals to 10 and b is equals to 20 am i right so one person is saying like this now third person is coming from our institute and is saying no sir why you are printing like this i want to print my values are 10 and 20 am i right now one more your friend came he is saying no no sir i want my own style 10 and 20 are my values so you tell me values are how many Two only, but how many ways we are we are printing so many different ways, sir? Why we need the different ways? That is a question. Now let us understand. Everybody has used the ATM. If you go to the ten ATMs, what you can do on ATM? You can withdraw the amount. Now every ATM does the same task or not, guys? Yes. But if you can see some messages or some look and feel is different. why because as per the client choice they have made that design but internal flow it is same one so similarly i am having only two number but my client will say either print in this way this way this way or this way any one way not all at a time but we will say how to print this way it is very simple guys i will tell you how to print suppose you want to print this first way 10 and 20 So how can you print, guys? 
So you write the printf. I told already this concept. So what you want to print? Numbers. So number will replace with what guys? Percentile D. So write percentile D. 10 means percentile D. Space, second percentile. D. Two numbers are then slash in to go on the new line. First value will replace with A and second value will replace with B. So on the screen, whatever you wrote in the double quotation that will get printed. Nothing but percentile D means 10 space 20. So this output you will get it. Now, second person is saying I want this output. Then again what you have to do? You have to write the one more printf. Now I told you, whatever the output you are expecting, you can copy paste. Let us copy paste. Or you can write also. What you have to do, wherever number is there, replace with percentile D. So I am replacing here percentile D. Here comma A comma B. So like this you can change this value. Understood guys, it is very clear now. You want the third output. So again what you have to do, complete thing copy, write the printf, double quotation, paste that all the concept. Where to change? Wherever number is there, just write percentile D. Rest all the things will be as it is. How many values, how many percentile D? That many values you pass from the B side. A value will go to the first percentile D, B value will go to the second percentile. Here very important thing, how many percentile D? That many, that many values compulsory have to pass it. And the last also, again copy and whatever the output you want, you have to write inside what? This printf. So printf in double quotation, you can paste it. How many values you have to pass? E and B. But what is the mistake I did here? I do not write what? Percentile D. So copy the percentile D concept here. Okay. Now remove this part which we don't want because I will copy from here. This part also I don't want. And this part also I don't want. So whatever the printf I wrote, I will copy this fourth printf. I will go to my program now. Everybody clear? So line number 8 I will remove guys. So this number already you got how to read this number. But how many numbers we want? Two numbers. So let me write that two things guys. Remove everything. Read the two numbers logic. Printf. How many numbers? Two. So enter the two numbers. Scanf. 2 percentile D, com ad address of A, comma address of B. So up to here, how to read? And that printing, whatever the four things we have written, I will copy paste. So let us remove these extra spaces. Now you guys tell me, what is the output we'll get it? We'll get it 10 space 20 here. Here we'll get it A is equals to 10 and B is equals to 20. Here I will get it, my values are 10 and 20. And last we'll get it what? My numbers are? 10 and 20 or my sorry uh, numbers are a uh, sorry for uh, 10 and 20 are my values let us compile and run and check the output 10 20 so whatever i wrote exactly same it is coming or not yes so like this we can print our values in a different ways guys i hope it is very clear for you so similarly this is for number so if I want decimal values guys, so let us consider here for decimal value. So decimal value is also very simple. What you have to do? For the decimal values, you have to write what here? Float. How many numbers you want? Suppose I want two numbers. So A comma B. Message is same. Enter the two numbers. Enter the two numbers. Scan F. How many percentile? F here, not D because float value is already you are aware. Address of A comma address of B. And then print that value. How to print? Percentile F space percentile F comma A comma B. So only thing what you are changing instead of integer float and instead of percentile D, percentile F. So last program we have discussed now that program also you can do it in the same way. Let us compile and run. Give 10.5. Now here if I give 10 also there is no problem. It will convert into decimal value. So number also it will accept decimal also. So like this we can read what? Decimal values. And if you want to read the character, I told character means what? You have to write what? Character data type. So write character 
you can take anything c so i'll write enter the char or enter the character character means which data type i told percentile c store that into c don't get confused this is c means this is c it is different you can write anything let us write the x if you are getting confusion and print that on the screen how to print it i told print of in double quotation what to write guys percentile c and change the value here c yes, sir c and here you write x so first i am creating one character x in that i am reading the x character and printing that x character let us compile and run now what character you want to print i want to print suppose p so p got printed so like this we can read number we can read decimal value and we can read character i hope you have enjoyed 